Hello everyone, welcome to the Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 16 for Immortal Gates of Fire. I'm your host Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, joined by ZK. How's it going, ZK? Pretty good, pretty good. Excited for another tournament. Back to 1v1s, it'll be an exciting one. We are looking at some pretty awesome games coming in very shortly. We have Scruffy and Santa Claus as our first match. Then following that, we'll have the winner of Spockling and King Kiko up against Mixu. Which should be interesting. We've seen... We haven't seen a lot of Spockling recently. They weren't here for the Alpha Trials. Yeah, but no. Santa and Scruffy certainly were. And yeah. they did... They did a lot of work. Yeah, actually, I, I believe Scruffy missed Alpha Trials. But in the other tournaments, he has been Oh, you're right, amazing. they did. Yes, you are yeah. you're correct. Santa, yeah. however, did get in the Alpha Trials. They only ended up getting 7th place. So they've got... They're going to be one to claw back in here. Yeah, Santa has always been one of our stronger players, so he'll want to prove himself back as, you know, one of the stronger players that we have in this uh, in this early alpha of the game. The early they stage have been doing a lot of experimenting with cheese. Some, I mean, they're they're the cheesy player. Santa is definitely the player to watch out for if you want to if you want to see stuff that gets weird and cheesy. Santa is the one to look for. And yeah. they apparently have been doing something. They've been practicing something because they were they were saying like, oh yeah, I've got all these all these ideas. Yeah, he he needs something to, good to go against Scruffy. As Scruffy has does have a lot of uh, uh, strategy game, you know, just a just a high status in there. Having Grandmaster Starcraft two showing his medal there, and coming into Immortal, he showed his medal right away as well, getting high results pretty quickly, getting really really good. And yeah, Santa has his work cut out for him. Yeah, you're I talking mean, about someone who consistently has been placing top four in every time yeah. they've entered. And yet, I still I I kind of rate Scruffy a bit higher just because. Well, I guess that's just my playstyle. Like, oh, I like someone that's just solid in playstyle. Well, so oh, I meant no Scruffy. Scruffy has been consistently getting. I mean, kind of, oh yeah, kind of both of them really. Oh, definitely. Like, it's hard to say like who's who's really advantage. I, I like both of them because they really have different playstyles that. They also know each other very well. They are both teammates, oftentimes in two v two. Yeah. So they are very familiar with each other. They are very familiar with each other's awkward. Or each other's weaknesses. Yeah, each other's play styles. One, as you said, more cheesy. The other one, a bit more on the macro, I'd say, solid side. Trying to go on the solid side at the very least. Uh, but we're unsure if uh, that's where he'll he'll go here. Is he has to figure out how to deal with Santa's uh, shenanigans. Exactly. They are they are aware of them, though. I mean, Santa's oh, yeah. shenanigans usually involve a lot of really aggressive early gameplay. We'll be seeing, like, often as we see weird things where they'll just throw out, like, throw out all their worker units and just go, like, hey, I'm just going to come in with that and fight you there. Or come in with just building up a bunch of basic structures and then throwing out basic infantry and doing much damage with that. Or in one case, acting like they are going to just sit there out completely out of the game like they weren't able to load properly for like three minutes before all of a sudden building a bunch of stuff and then coming at you oh yeah that's a classic that classic uh, just hide your stuff and go in with a bunch of stuff afterwards never know what yeah that say. only happened once or twice but it was it was weird when it did it's no sad that just wants to surprise you that's that's a simple thing he wants to surprise you with a bag of gift you didn't expect and that's a santa <laughs> surprise yeah it's like is it is it coal it's like no it's uranium Mm. <laughs> so much better. It's like it's it's still rock. It's just a bit more fun of a rock. Yeah. Stuff at you. <laughs> it's more useful as a rock. It's healthier as a rock. It's okay. Not not healthier as a rock, but you know, it does a thing. I mean, it depends on how you define healthy, right? If you define healthy as kills you faster, well, I guess that's not really healthy though. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's healthier for the environment, but like oh, you don't want to you don't want to handle it. That rock is spicy. That's true. Anything that uh, that uh, that brings down the humans might be better for the environment of the planet. Who knows? Well, I don't want to go that far. <laughs> oh, I guess not. Hmm. But... I meant more that it's not coal. Oh, coal is bad for the environment. Right, right. Yeah. Yes! Not as that's bad normally as what Santa gives people. Yeah, but not also as bad presents, as but mostly coal. Yeah, that's true. I, I think this Santa is definitely more of a coal, per a, a coal Santa. Yeah. Hmm. He's like, oh yeah, this is the surprise you have, Cole. It's like, you give me that every time. Yeah, I cheese you every single time. Oh, right, that's how you work. <laughs> I was expecting to get what I wanted. No, you never get what you want. You wanted a straight up game. Like, did you want coal? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's, I have coal. Hmm. I have all sorts of coal. I occasionally have uranium, which isn't coal, but still. 
still. You can burn like, it. Do, you, do and... you want rock? Do you want power rocks? Hmm. Would, would, would uranium burn? That's my big question. No. I mean, it, I think so, but that's kind of wasting probably... it. I mean, it kind of burns on its own as well, right? That's that's its whole purpose. Well, it generates heat on its own. Hmm. So you don't even need to burn it to make it energy, huh? Oh, yeah, nope. that's the whole principle. It just, yeah, it just sort of happens. Hmm. I mean, you just need enough of it in the right configuration to make the energy useful. But then yeah, also have other more. stuff to make it not go out of control. So that yeah, that's it doesn't... the other issue, right? That's the other yeah. issue. But you do it right, and you get good energy. So it's good. Yes. Like Santa. Exactly. Santa's a force of good. Uranium is a force of good. I'm not too Therefore, sure where uranium is Santa. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Santa is made I, of uranium. I, I think I kind of agree with that analogy, though. Santa is pretty much uranium because you never know how it's going to come out, how the energy. You know there's going to be a lot of energy there. You don't know where it's going. You don't know how it's coming out. You know it's coming, though. It's coming down and strong. Yeah. And sometimes and you, you can contain when. it. Yeah, and sometimes you can contain it, but oftentimes you can't. It just explodes on you. Yep. But both Santa and Uranium are stopped by carbon rods. Oh, well, there you go. And how yeah. did the carbon rods stop Santa? I mean, you make a cage out of them. It's oh, okay. pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, that is obvious. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, most, most people, like, cages generally work in most cases. Anyway, we have a game that people are playing now. We do? Oh. I'm sorry, we could talk about Uranium later. <laughs> yep. For now, we have a game. Yeah, there's Scruffy trying to stop their uranium, so let's go uh, Carbon Rods. And go Team rod. Inanimate Carbon Rod! Mm. And on the other side, we have Santa Claus, our uranium boy. Go Team Ur Defeating the Inanimate Carbon Rod! Exactly. It's all for or against Carbon Rods. We don't really know who you want to cheer for. Yeah. But Santa being boring. Actually not going to full uranium road, not even getting the ethers, which is probably the closest analogy to uranium here. Yeah, that Almost. does make sense. I, actually, it's one of those lore things. Is like, how does that work? Because I know it's like this basically, it's basically condensed magic, which yep. is kind of what uranium is if you look at yeah. it in a really abstract way. What so, is you know, magic but energy? What is magic but energy? I mean, it's, it's all energy here. Careful design of how that energy is used in a way that makes sense to human beings, which is basically yeah, technology. That's too far for me. Yeah, way too far for me. It's just uh, energy. Everything is energy. Everything does stuff so, with other stuff. And oh, there we go. Yeah. Or, Scruffy, Scruffy being a little bit more on the forward side. This is, I don't know if I'd call this cheese. We've seen it so many times or some players will basically set up shop on one of these ramps and Scruffy's no exception. So Scruffy, Scruffy just looking to get that early map control, wanting to make it that much harder for Santa Claus to maneuver, especially like this side is right next to their base. So if Scruffy can hold on to this little ridge here. They have a decent chunk of map control, a decent chunk of pyre control, and also a solid staging ground. Yeah, having the hallowed ground so close by is really helpful to get that pyre camp right in front, uh, giving all those entire extra range to attack that pyre camp. And, yes. you know, if Santa tries to go up, well, he has to go up hallowed ground. A lot of units get a bit of a small advantage on that. So that just makes it that much tougher to dislodge, which, man, I mean, that's what Scruffy's going for. So, mm -hmm. and, if, and we know eventually Scruffy might just get a tower there. And the Citadel helps even more reinforce that. We've seen Santa not be happy with the towers lately, and he might have to face them against Scruffy, but Scruffy knows how to play aggressively as well. Good micro here, making sure his units don't take any hole damage, only taking some shields off. Uh, but the teapot's being annoying. Yeah, oh. Santa, Santa wanted to get that snipe. Scruffy wise, wise to the first attempt. Still doesn't stop it. Santa gets the, oh. gets the fire anyway. Taking it right from under Scruffy's nose, that Scruffy won't be able to get any towers set up here anytime soon. Mm, Santa being the evil little little elf. Rumptious? No. Yeah, I guess. That's because I mean like... Gremlin also works, but I think elf is a bit more appropriate. In any event, Santa slowing down Scruffy's ability to hold terrain, not really ultimately stopping him. They are gonna they are gonna go for that tower. They are gonna try to hold this hold the line here, and Santa Claus. They, they bought themselves time. That's still something. She bought it's themselves quite a bit of time. They are not letting Scruffy get away with pyre control. Instead, Scruffy decided, you know what? Forget it. I'm going in. And he's going in strong. Absolvers will show up pretty soon, but if they're on the wrong spot or wrong time, Scruffy might still get a few kills here. Absolvers trying to get out, but there's nothing really to, 
to stop these forces as they go. Instead, Santa going for his own counterattack here as Absolvers come out, and Santa looking to do some counter damage of his own. And we'll have a much easier time doing so as Scruffy much more focused on tech than they are on getting defenses up. Santa Claus should be able to get rid of at least some units. Stopping the Angelarium. No air for Scruffy for a while. Durst is coming in, so Scruffy... Scruffy countering Santa's force. Santa forced to retreat, but they still... They did their damage. They, they bought themselves so much time on being able to get units that shoot up and get in their own air force. So air control yep. may be Santa's thanks to that one attack. Yeah, slowing down slowing down Scruffy's timing by such a big deal. As I'm Scruffy coming back in with Fuse and Tariq to try and figure out what's up, but he'll see this is not a time to attack, reinforcing his front position here on top of the hill. Centauri at the back will have to go for the Bastion to deal some damage. Um, yeah, at this point, Santa seems primed to go on the map. The tower is not quite done, so he has a bit of time, uh, but he'll need to go back and defend this as his Centauris are attacking both the main and the natural. Oh, nothing mining for Santa. Santa, I think they, they are now having to deal with that uphill battle we were talking about earlier. It's Scruffy's set up. This, like, the yeah, short no path way. is no longer accessible for Santa. They've, it's just gonna make it that much harder. Yeah, Santa won't be happy with this so far. You'll have to look for other avenues of attack, and Santa's well known for that. At the same time, the two Centauri in the main dealing a lot of damage. Warded is out to take him out. doing? They're just sort of, sit, like, go for the, go for the, ether. okay. Well, they're dead now. Well, they were going to die, though. I mean, yeah, it didn't have to just they slow down his opponent. They could have slowed down the ether mining. They could have done a lot of yeah. damage more economically than they did. So, Odd choice, but I don't know. That was... Yeah, that was still expensive. Happened. It, it is expensive, expensive, you know. Four Centauri, 400 alloy. Uh, this early in the game makes a big difference. And Scruffy will need to find a way to defend as Santa deciding, you know what, I don't need to attack that path. I can go another way. Absolver already <laughs> here. Uh, but one Absolver might not be enough for this. Dervish... Santa not too scared, or is he? Okay, just wants the pirate. Now Santa, no, Santa can just take control. Like they, they don't have to contest this because remember they, they have an air force. They stopped Scruffy from getting their own air force way early on. Now, finally, Scruffy's able to get back into that. But hey, Santa took advantage, took advantage of the tower foundation to build their own. Santa's able to completely get map control on their side. Only downside is nothing that shoots up. But other than that, they're <laughs> doing fine. Yeah, losing the wardens. Uh, a bit expensive, he has a word of his own, but there's two on his opponent's side. The Scepter coming out soon, but that won't be enough, as there's quite a few units for Santa using Heaven's Aegis to help with this fight. Going in for the kill, kills the Absolver. Uh, the moats are forced to, forced to run, and what does More Santa have left? This base might go down! Santa, oh if they take out this base, they have completely wiped out Scruffy's economy outside of their main. The, not a whole lot left is here. And the Air Force once again getting destroyed. <laughs> Under Scruffy's nose. Santa Claus not letting Scruffy get away with anything in this natural expansion. Mm. And now we see the disadvantage of pu putting an outward base like that. It's great in the later stage of the game, but Santa didn't care. He just went around and killed all of his opponent's stuff. Scruffy losing production structures on top of the expansion. Uh, he's definitely not happy with his situation right now. How he on, can he come back he... into this? Oh, it's it's going to be extremely difficult. It... Third here, also likely to be lost. Scruffy's entire economy is going to be just cut down to their main base and a handful of production structures. Like, Scruffy cannot build anything. They can barely get any resources to build stuff with in the first place. And they've spent so much on, in vain, on trying to get their economy stronger, and now they have nothing to fight with. Yeah, well, the Scepter here is doing some damage as Santa does not have any anti-air here. As Santa finally went down. One of those Absolvers might just get away. Scepter, how fast is it? Is it quick enough to get to the tower and get that small heal up? Seems it will. Scruffy not even getting Oof. that mercy kill. No, Scruffy is... Scruffy is so far behind. Like, they've... Their map control did them not a whole lot of good. Because, again, Santa just... Santa found a way around that. And because yeah, Santa didn't have to work with map. the air... Just, yeah, that's a huge map. Santa had air control, so that just... That much more room to maneuver, and opening up even more ways to get around the map. Santa looking to go for the kill. At the very least, he can kill the Bastion, which will slow down Scruffy's economy even more, as that <laughs> does give one full base of economy, and it's going down very quickly here. As Scruffy needs to reposition his units to help defend the main, but Santa seems primed for the kill here as Absolvers 
getting in position, sieging up, and everything runs away. Scruffy counterattacking instead. Uh, what yeah. happens next? Well, Scruffy's counterattack is going to be quite a bit slower than Santa's main attack. Am I broken to save, look to save the day? It's just, it's going to be enough damage. Depends on where Santa focuses, but Santa continues to go for the throat. Scruffy unable to defend at all, losing everything they built up in their main base. Their entire economy is in shambles. No mining, one Acropolis, none of resources to build anything further. It's just a matter of when does Santa decide to go snap the neck. Like, this Acropolis goes down, and that is it. Yeah, and there's not much mining. We, as I said before, the, the Bastion is dead, so he loses a full base of mining there. He doesn't even have anything mining right now until they the Bastion can't, goes They back cannot online. save themselves. If this, if this gets destroyed, Scruffy cannot just build another one to set, stop themselves from losing the game. Yeah. Not that they can build an army to stop it anyway. This is Santa Claus just cleaning up. Scruffy... I don't know where they're trying to hold on, because they have so little to work with right now. It's just... Santa playing with their food, finding the opening. They've got it now. This is... Yeah, Santa's gonna just clean up. Yeah, Scruffy doing his best with what he has. He has a few Zephyrus. Zephyrus can great with the Windstep Micro. Uh, but he knows it's not enough, and he calls it GG here as Santa takes Game 1 of this best of three. Well, good job, Santa, as they, they earned that. I mean, considering how much Scruffy was taking control of the game early on. Yeah, it's, like something, they, it's something we can notice. It, it is something we can notice a lot of. If you want to take some place on the map, that just means you have less at home to defend. And Santa took advantage of that, finding multiple ways of attack into his main directly. And without those towers there, without uh, the defense at home, I mean, the defenses were all out on the map. And Santa said, I don't care if they're out on the map. I'll just go around them. Yeah, timed it perfectly, too. Like, getting rid of the yep. early Angelarium, getting rid of the Air Force that Scruffy could have built. Like, that, Santa having all his wardens, they, like, they could break through the defenses that Scruffy had built up. Because nothing yep. Scruffy had could shoot up. Or very little Scruffy had could shoot up, so the all that ground army just simply couldn't last. And that yep. let Santa break through once again. Like, over and over, Santa broke through because that one hit early on. Yeah, this is a game of timings, right? Everything is so close at this higher level. And these players are two of our higher level players, and they know that if you slow someone down by 30 seconds, that 30 seconds more you have to attack and kill him. And Santa took full advantage of that. We'll see if he's able to do it in the next one as well. Uh, although we might yeah, see some different strategies. Ooh. Okay, Santa going for Orzum, which is what I expected them to go for earlier. Yeah. They do like, like the Croft right now. They do. They I And mean, they play everybody, but... At the moment, they've been doing a lot of cheesy stuff with Kroth. They've been doing a lot of cheesy with Orzum specifically. It's... Like, this is where I'm expecting there's going to be potentially shenanigans. Yeah, but this time, Zol, the Scruffy is going for Zol, so... Zol is the other immortal we've been seeing, seeing quite a bit, especially with the Hunter's Ground. Uh, is that a, a Hunting Ground? Yeah, Hunting Ground, very yeah. powerful. Gives a good boost of attack, so if you place it well, you can really surprise your opponent and kill a lot of units. It's been a, some ex an exciting uh, spell. As it used to be a bit infused to get that power boost, and now it seems Zol's the one that has that power. I mean, if in the one particular spot, it's a, it's a little bit, oh, a yeah. little bit limited. Oh yeah, it's definitely limited. Uh, which is great because you can't just uh, pop it up. When yeah, I mean that was run. that was the problem with infused was that you couldn't yeah. you could just do it anywhere and you couldn't. It was essentially kind of a game of chicken between the two players trying to figure out when they wanted to burn that fire and just yeah, it just wasn't that that interesting. So the current the current approach is a significant improvement. Any event, especially, especially since no. we have all immortals with three different spells, it's going to make it so yes. exciting to see. Yes, that did that did spice up the game a lot. Mm. But so far, both players actually playing it very vanilla. As early expansion into tech for both sides, going into f like a bit of a later approach for any kind of power control, any kind of map control. And Santa not even going forward with their Legion Hall. They're staying inside their base. Santa playing it extremely safe. Not at all what I expected. I'm quite curious about Zol versus Orzum. What they can what they can come up with as Santa might just be scared of, of Zol putting his hunting grounds in his base and being too far away to defend it. This way his reinforcements come a bit quicker than that. And also placing yeah. his building there means that Scruffy won't be able to get around without being envisioned at the very least to go into his main base. Which is something we saw of Zentari last game, with uh, Scruffy just sending his Zentari completely inside the base. All the time. That was their main asset, was just more Zentari in the alloy lines than Santa had moats. 
for most yeah. of that game. Yeah. The other issue with that is that he did end up losing those units, and you know, losing those units, it's a yeah, big that difference. Yeah, could game. that could have been nice for defense. Yeah. Here comes. But yeah, so Scruffy is just gonna be. Scruffy will at least have the early map control. They can set up. They can get Pyre coming here, throw down Zol herself, and Santa is ready. Like you said, Santa is holding the line here to defend against what they are assuming to be an early attack, which is looking like a safe assumption. Mm. Uh, Scruffy very happy with all the map control he has. He doesn't have to worry. If Santa's not on the map quite yet, he will be heading out pretty soon to contest those pyre camps. And once both start contesting, you got to be careful of the micro. And yeah, two's no. entirely don't want to take no. up all no. eight of those. No, 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 not outside, not outside of your base, not outside of hell, not, not when they're melee mode. Yeah, exactly. No, Santa Claus knows better than that. Uh, not losing a single unit. Waiting for the Absolvers, so this seems to be a, a slight tech push with the Absolvers and the Zentari. Will be quite... It it's always a quite powerful push, and we'll see how Scruffy decides to de defend this. With a lot of micro, he can go in and out and force the Absolvers to siege up before they're ready. And just slow him down until he gets his own units to counter them. Well, or just Luckily for, for Santa, attack. Santa spotted... Well, Santa spotted this, so they are already ready. Not even... A single bit of damage coming in from Scruffy, losing a bonus talker for free. And now San is pretty much impenetrable. Scruffy will not be able to push in hard early. They still have map control. How long they can hold on to that remains to be seen. The question is, does Scruffy want... Okay, Santa's going on the aggression right now. Going for those bone stalkers. Wants to take them down as fast as possible. Besides, Scruffy is making resonance, so the next step in, the, in his tech is coming up. And Santa Claus can be ready to push. But does he want to push his opponent's base directly? Well, they have the opportunity. They have the units. They have... This is kind of the timing before mass, before Critical Mass of Resonance is built. And Scruffy is going to be basically able to stop everything Santa Claus has set up so far. But Scru Scruffy, Scruffy being clever with the run-by. Holding Santa back. It's yeah, he tried to go for the back end, but I think it was a full wall now, so the pathing made him go back by the tower, and Scruffy won't be happy with losing all his Bone Stalkers as Santa closes down the exit, and there's nowhere to run for these Bone Stalkers. But that bought time. There's nowhere to run. They died, but they died in the service of keeping the rest of Scruffy's units set up, getting the rest of the army on online, and Santa's just gonna have that much of a harder time actually attacking. For Absolvers, though, that's a huge amount. Can Scruffy... Like, if they get on top of everything... Uh, Scruffy will just oh, die yeah. those four absorbers. So oh yeah, absolutely. So powerful. Absolutely, but the, the problem is getting in quickly, getting in hard enough to get on top of everything. Though the timing is working out well for Santa, Scruffy is not in position. They are not set up. And they and the teapot sees everything. The teapot sees everything. Santa knows Scruffy is just busy moving around. Is Scruffy gonna find? There go. Okay, Scruffy looking to just avoid this entirely, which is wise. I, I don't think Scruffy even saw that, but going for the power camp... They might not, but at the position they're in now, point. if they get Santa attacks into that, Scruffy sees it coming. Scruffy did not get ready beforehand, and now desperately trying to push back. Forced to use the power, forced to get Zol in here. Does get a couple Zentari down. Can they push Santa back? Can they get rid of these Absolvers? Because that would turn the game around completely if they get rid of the Absolvers. Yeah, the Absolver's going to the tower. Tower just finished up at the right time. Empire and Broken on top of Oof. it to get Orzip to help. Oh, and yeah, that was... And yeah, Resonance have to run back. That was huge. Santa... Yeah, that was perfectly clutch. Yeah, Santa wiping out everything Scruffy could have attacked with, and now has a staging ground to work from. Has map control, <laughs> has a third. They, Santa secured their position in that fight. And heading for Scepters to counter those uh, Resonance, as Resonance are great... Uh, zone control, and on top of it, they're pretty good dislodgers, long range of absolvers, so they're able to take him down from a distance. Those scepters will can kind of just jump on top of them if they want to. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Well, until Scruffy gets wise to it, but at the very least, Zan is going to be limiting where Scruffy can go. This is just as good. Yeah, they are stabilizing at this point, which gives them an AoE on their attacks. And Scruffy behind us had already taken his third, is is fine with taking his fourth all the way in the corner where Santa has no clue it is. Behind us, Santa slowly but surely getting his expansion up. And what tech will he be going for next? This push, I don't think it can do it can accomplish much more. And Well, not much yet. The Santa has been 
Sand's relying entirely on the basic stuff. They haven't gotten any any tech structure for anything they've been building up so far. No thrones, no Sharu. Just getting their production going. I mean, they were relying heavily early on on just pushing and doing a lot of damage, not necessarily building up the production. And that is costing them. They cannot build any more units at the moment. Heading for that fourth base now, Santa. So both of them ha going up to four bases. Scruffy repositioning to make sure his opponent can't just jump on top of him, but he gets an Absolver on the way out. It costs him a few bone stalkers, but that's worth it. Oh yeah, that was... Like, Scruffy really needed that. Because Santa's army... Santa's army is getting scary, and Scruffy doesn't have a huge amount that can deal with pretty much any of that stuff. If they throw in some thrums, they'll be fine, but do they have the ability... To, they don't have the ability to do that. They cannot... They cannot field an army that's just going to deal with this army from Santa Claus in a clean uh, way. Can you head back to can you head back to Scruffy's natural where there's a tower going up? Yeah. Oh, that. yeah. That, there's that, the Santa Claus special. Yeah. Sit yep, it all yep, right yep, behind yep. the alloy line. Good luck with that, Scruffy. This is this is painful. Yeah, like Scruffy, to Scruffy this. saw it before, but yeah. Yeah, and the way to defend this is Samson resonance back that outrange it. Uh, but getting him back, that means they're not the front anymore, which makes it that much easier for Santa to find another angle of attack. Doesn't even go for the third base, goes for the main directly. Of course, always got to be careful going up that, that ramp. That means it's going to be harder to get out of there. And, okay, Scruffy going for that tower, taking it out as fast as possible. Well, so you see Santa has Yeah, Santa just going for it. They... they... Just waiting for Scruffy to get out of the main base, reposition into the third, because thinking, oh, Santa's going to go for a frontline attack, and with the decoys and Tari as well for the run by. Very cleverly done by Santa to completely deceive Scruffy into their intentions. Now the main base is heavily assaulted, and the residents are on the back foot trying to get back in here. Yeah, so Santa has no way out at this point. He needs to do a lot of damage, and trying to keep this army alive, but keeping it alive is actually the hard part, as he's pretty much stuck in that corner. He can't, but if he does enough damage, it can be worth it. Here comes Morius, but as you said, there's not much to do to end here. Here come the Wraith Bolts to deal with those Scepters. You need to stay away, not Oof. go too far forward. I mean, Santa might be able to escape if they... No, they went now. It's just that those Wraith Bolts are from Scruffy. They are doing all the work to save this. Even losing, like, they did lose their God Heart, which is huge. Like, tech-wise, that is going to set them back a few minutes. But again, the damage being dealt here, especially to the air units, that was the main threat. Like, the air units, not the, like, the absolvers could be dealt with by the residents. So Scruffy had an answer to the ground army. But the air army was where things were starting to get dicey. And Scruffy, with solid micro, was able to get rid of it. Like, they... Yeah, behind this, yeah. yeah, behind this, Santa was doing more damage as much as he could on the other bases. Uh, so, yeah, it wasn't... Uh, so Santa wasn't his only plan. He is expanding to five bases now. Uh, but he'll need to rebuild his army. That was all his expensive tech units. He needs to rebuild them. Uh, Scruffy can be ready for a counterattack now. And what a counterattack it is with six resonants there. The Citadel was not destroyed, though. <laughs> God damn. Wait, what? Oh, man. Oh, no, it's just yeah, getting rebuilt. Was... Yeah, he forgot the foundation. <laughs> it was, I mean, they forgot to put one themselves. In any event, well, that will this be annoying is... once more. That will be annoying. Scruffy... Not actually pushing out, even though they they got a decent victory. They can get another one. They will be in a good... Like, th See, the key thing here is there's not a whole lot that's going to stop the Bone Stalker. So the anti-air force for Scruffy has gotten significantly stronger, having destroyed Santa's Absolvers. Yeah, Which is just at, in time. Just in time for Thrones and Hallowers to get in here. Well, man, Santa really has a plan well detailed out. He finds the base on the corner, so Scruffy loses his fourth base economy after losing his main. And Santa really seems like in a winning position right now, having surrounded his opponents with citadels. So Scruffy needing to get out. He has two citadels to confront on either side, and even a citadel in his own natural. Once again, a citadel in their own natural. Scruffy not seeming too concerned about that, looking instead to find a way to start breaking Santa Claus's Iron fisted grip on the map. It's, re it's really hard now that Halwars actually outrange his uh, his own zone control. Uh, having the slaughter of his own that are big, lo 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 uh, longer range, Scruffy might need some Aklux or something to deal with uh, the Halwars or jumping on them. Said he seems to be going for the other side, and Santa 
Seeing this, it just goes for the third base. There's nothing defending that third base. Yeah, this is this is base race territory. Scruffy, Scruffy going for it. They have, they have nothing in production. Like they are, they are relying entirely on this base race. And they are at least, they're at least someone in luck that everything San has built up is in relatively in order. Yeah, the bases uh, are all next to each other. It's not. There's no tricky hidden bases. Yeah, but that is okay, a lot of bases down. to take down. That is a lot of bases. There's six of them. Too to take many, down. in fact, for Santa's comfort. Well, it's a lot of bases to take down, but not too many for Santa's comfort as they are coming in here. To cry. Yes. And they are ready. Pillar drops. Having to deal with the plague. Is that going to be enough? The pillar not even helping out here. But the lack of anti air absolutely is. Scruffy desperately trying to keep the units alive, but it's just not enough of an army. Even with the hunting circle, it's simply not going to be Scruffy's day. Yeah, Scruffy losing all his army. He's only down to 800 army value. Well, Santa's still up at 4,000. Yeah. And well, behind us, Scruffy was reestablishing a few bases, looking for more counterattacks, but the Howlers oh. take down those Bone Stalkers, and Scruffy's right up is the run barely by. nothing. Yeah, barely that nothing run left. By. Oof. Like, that's the problem, is Scruffy has to rebuild everything, and while they are decent on economy, they've been struggling building up production structures they've actually cannot build any air or heavy unit production structure like their amber womb and bone canopy cannot be rebuilt right now so they are entirely dependent on infantry as their backbone force and they have and against towers they're just going to lose so many of them to the splash damage it's just not going to be scruffy's day as they're losing two bases worth of economy right away santa claus just tightening their grip on the map here having Basically, no room for Scruffy to get back in this game. And Scruffy down to two bases. This oh. stage in the game is pretty much death. One base, really. Only their main base is actually... Main base and this hidden six o'clock are mining. Scruffy is desperately trying to find some way to put themselves back in the game against an, an opponent who has gotten the maximum size of army, has half of the map under their control, and the other half is being raised. Uh, at this point, Scruffy close to throwing in the towel as he's he finally killed the Citadel at his natural. He's able to mine from his natural once more. Still has 3,000 alloy at this point. He's been stopping stop, stop from mining for half the game. And Santa can find a way, can try to end this game in basically any way. He doesn't know about the base at the bottom, uh, but he doesn't even have to care about it. No, they're they're so ahead. Like they're, They have three times the economy. Three times the economy, three times the army value. That's not a good like, spot. <laughs> it is not. I just, I try. If there's anything Scruffy can do, now is the time to do it. And I, like I said, mass infantry is kind of the only strategy. Scruffy does not see any strategy out of this, and they throw in the towel. Yep. And it two to zero. will be, a, yeah, 2 0 for Santa. Santa really showing his medal. Uh, Strong game. Both both very strong games. First one, a strong timing attack. Second one, goes for the main. I was scared that losing that army would be too much, but no, he had a good economy behind it. He was able to replenish pretty quickly, and there was nothing that his opponent could do to really take him out. Yeah, so that was... That was that. That was the first half of the winter semifinals. Second half will be starting soon enough. I believe Spock game was King Kiko. Not sure what... Uh... Uh, how many games in there are at this point? This is these are all best of threes. Let's see. It looks like they have been playing. Mm. Let's see. They are in game two. Okay, game two. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure on, on who is better between Sparkling and um, King Kiko. Sparkling, of course, has been playing for quite a while. Uh, I see King Kiko playing a, quite a few games in the last few days been practicing a they've lot. They've been looking for games a lot. They've absolutely been... That's been their... If you want to find games, you're going to be able to find games with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been the main uh, the main game asker, I guess, for the last week or so. <laughs> always kind of... Always changes a little bit. We have some people just asking for games, and then oh, some people come back a bit later. Oh, I haven't played in a while. Let's play some games. Yeah. Uh, Scruffy and Santa are two of those people that play the most. Or have played the most, but... Uh, yeah. The... But Mr. Kareem, King Kiko, has been doing a lot of asking for games. A little bit of awkward times when they do it, but hopefully they do have managed to get some practice in. Yeah. A lot of different hours. We have Euros playing. We have uh, East Coasters like myself or West Coasters like you. And of course, we have uh, some people in New Zealand like the devs. 
Well, it's just Toby and, Toby and Harry. Yeah. The dead are all over the place. Yeah, exactly. There's some there, there's some, well, in, in the west, near where you are, about like three hours south of you. Most of them are. Yeah, yeah. most of them are a bit further south, but yeah. Oh. Three hours would be just outside of Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah. My time. Not a good enough of my car my car distances. I'm in free. I mean part of that's because the I five is constantly packed of traffic. Oh, like go. that you might See, it might be you might be able to get to the south side of Washington at midnight. See, I was talking in free hours by a helicopter, obviously. Oh well by helicopter. Who well, doesn't travel by helicopter? Yeah, that's that's how you define distance and time, right? How what's distance between Montreal yeah, and Yeah, I know, as Vancouver? everyone you know, the, the common it's the common phrase, you know, as the helicopter flies. Yeah. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. Who would want to do the yeah, distance no, by car? You get stuck by traffic. Ugh, who wants to do I that? Know, right? No, yeah. I just get in your helicopter and ride. Mm -hmm. Three hours. Real simple. Three hours from your place to Oregon. Pretty sure that's about right. A bit further if you want to go to France, where there's a few other devs and, I mean, Euro players. We have Hydra in chat, who, of course, is from the Netherlands. Uh, one of our best players. The one that won the first Alpha, Alpha tournament. Yes, they did. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they, won it, they won it. It was a bit of a back and forth, but they did end up winning it. Mm hmm. We'll see if he can defend it next time we have one of those. As those are a recurring series, we don't know the net date of the next one quite yet. Uh, but they, they are planned to come back. So oh do, yeah, do keep an eye out for the next Alpha series, which will be announced when it's ready. Exactly. Now it looks and... like we're just going to be having to wait on the next match. So we're just going to take a short break while we wait for the next match to get going. Stay tuned, we'll be back as soon as King Kiko and Spockling are either done or ready for Game 3. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Immortal Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 16. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, still joined by ZK. And yeah. we are back after a bit of a break to get to watch Mixu and King Kiko, also known as Mr. Kareem, also apparently known as Golden Tigger. Ooh, I like those names. That's a lot of names. You see, a Golden lot of people Tigger just have fun. feels off. Like, I, I don't know. I don't like it, and I don't know why. See, everyone kind of has one name, and then there's this guy that has, like, three of them across every server. And I kind of want to know his email address is going to be, like, something really out there as well. It's going to be like, oh, Spaceman number four. It's like, oh, great. Well, I mean, to be fair, that's actually not a bad idea for the email address. To avoid, you know, yeah. getting people to just send you spam. Spaceman, yeah. yeah. Actually, you're right. If you write Spaceman, remove, like, the middle letters, it does spell spam. No, span. Ah, uh, span. Yeah. So close. Yeah, span. If you rearrange the letter, you can get spam. <laughs> Wait, how do you... What? Oh, right. No, okay, right. You just use the first three letters, spay, and then you remove everything except the M, and then you get spam. So if you spell it spam, you get spam. Yeah, basically. But you have all the letters from space, man. So it works out. Uh, this is mostly true. I mean, I guess... You... It's completely true. It's 100% technically correct. I know, I'm just trying to think about the rest of it. Is like... So at that point, you have, like... Scene? I guess, like, weirdly spelled Sean. You think we can get Sean there? Oh, a space C -E -A -N. man. C-E-A-N. Uh, It'd be a weird, scan. like, Scan. Skeen. Keen. Keen. Uh, huh. uh, Mr. Kareem, yeah. Mr. Kareem, Keen. Yeah, I don't think that works either. And also, also, Space Man came out of nowhere. It had nothing to do with his name. Either Golden Tigger, either Mr. Kareem, or King Kiko. <laughs> no, so, it was just, it was just, we're, just, <laughs> we're guessing Mr. Kareem's email. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Don't don't try Spaceman at whatever. No, it's anything. Spaceman number four at yahoo.ca. Definitely. <laughs> God, it would be a Yahoo email address, wouldn't it? <laughs> Definitely. Who doesn't love Yahoo? No, it's more that it's like that's that's the sort of name that you would have come up with in 2003 when Yahoo Mail was relevant. <laughs> what is not relevant anymore? How dare you? <laughs> I mean, it still exists. You can still like, use it. It's just that Gmail basically took over as like the go-to. I want a web email service for something, anything. Hey, I still have Hotmail as my spam. Okay, it's my spam email, that's true. Wait, how? I thought it changed it to live completely. I don't know, it's still at hotmail.com. Oh, all right, well. Yeah. And it hasn't been overtaken by... Because, I don't know, I had... I had a Hotmail account just for the sake of having... I can't remember why I needed it for a Microsoft account or something. And it got just flooded with spam immediately. The way my other accounts simply haven't. Like, I don't know. It's like Hotmail's spam filter just wasn't very good. 
Well, it's because you chose the name Spaceman Number Four. It's always gonna get full of spam if you. I use didn't that use address. that name. Are you sure? Well, I mean, no, it wasn't, it was, this was no, this was in the early. This is two thousands. Spaceman okay. One through Three weren't taken yet. All oh, right. Yeah, you didn't have to go to number four. You could just exactly. go for Spaceman. Also, Spaceman on now. its own. There was actually there were four yeah. free Spacemen. Damn, that's so many. If only I know. you could have picked one of them. Yeah, a lot of spam though. That's always the issue. Well, that's Hotmail. Yeah, Spaceman leads to spam. And Hotmail, I guess. I also had well, a live thought at four at some point. I Okay, I guess that makes sense because you're in Quebec, but that doesn't make, make sense because you're not in France. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's a far out way to go for the emails. Kind of like how Mix is going far out with their first Legion Hall. There you go, and makes you this Legion Hall at the front. Nothing unusual, and I draw not really, but it's, it is distant. So that is that is a, that is a opening that Mr. Kareem could take advantage of. Who Mr. Kareem going for a lot of E for really quickly taking a third one as soon as the base finishes. I'm quite happy to see. Look how timed out this is. We've seen Mr. Kareem has been practicing. His E for is going to finish right as the base finishes, or like oh, yeah. two yeah, seconds. Got before, hard up. They have enough. Yeah. They'll should have enough for some tech structures once the Godhard's done building. Pretty good. He has a build. This is a real. This is a build. They do he have a build, but it's a... it's going hard tech. They are not like they only want these mass hunters to keep themselves alive in the early game. They that doesn't seem to be the focus. The focus seems to be very fast resonance, judging by the neurosite. Oh yeah, I was hoping for the fast rounds that we've seen a bit before, mm. uh, but no fast rounds this time. As you said, probably resonance. Could be something cheeky as well, because he doesn't follow the meta, right? He's pretty new to That's a good the point. general drill players, so he doesn't have to follow the meta. He's like, oh, you know what? I really love Icors. Like, okay. And then he's going for all these units for him. Uh, I mean, you, you could do that. It's a... Oh, yeah. It's I don't know. It's, it's like... I, it's one that's not the bill. It's like, you very quickly learn, like, you try to go for that, and it's a niche option. And I don't think Mr. Kareem... Yeah. I, if they... It's like the safe option is the one is the resident option. I think Mr. Cream's gonna go for the safe option. It seems like you know, get a newer player, you're gonna have a bit less confidence, especially going against someone like Mixu, who's really strong. You want to go in, and who's taking your pyre right out from under you despite your best efforts, oh, well, and who's building proxies for. dervishes because why not? In the middle of the base. Okay, he doesn't have to care about all that tech coming out. Nope. Well, lucky not there's two towers here already, so. Yeah, there's two towers, so he can go defend that, but that's two Amber so those Resonance are coming in fast and early. Resonance actually pretty much hard counter these type of units, uh, the Dervish. If but you can get them fast before... enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the big question. Like, Mixu, Mixu has the timing here. If they can just wipe out his economy before Mr. Kareem can get the Resonance up, then Mixu's basically got this game in the bag. Well, he can still hide behind a Bash in the towers, of course. He will lose a lot of economy. Oh, Ooh, yeah, but that's assuming they do. Like, this, multitasking is the hard part here, and Mixu's completely plugged right into the fact that Mr. Cream doesn't have a lot of experience. Like, their multitasking is not going to be as strong. Yeah, he, he did mm. lose two of them, but he keeps the other ones alive, gets them to the healing tower. At this point, the ones that spawn come in, but the Resonance here now, and those Dervish cannot deal with the Resonance, and Symbiote's going back to mine a bit early. No, just trying to find free options that they can, where they can. Ah, oh, no! No, no! No! Mr. Kareem, look Okay, the symbiotes are saved. Just barely. Mix is between resolvers, like though. I don't think Mr. Kareem is any the wiser that it's a proxy situation. Well, at the same time, frontline assault, because why not? Dover Safari in the yeah. natural, natural expansion as well, just shutting down Mr. Kareem's economy. And Mixu uh. going for their third at the same time, because why not? Just add insult yeah. to injury, why don't you? Yeah. Mixu just keep attacking a relentless push. Of course, Golden Tigger does have the great counter. It is in Resonance. Resonance kind of counter all of these units. If he can get them in the right position, but getting in the right position is the first step, and he has to figure out how where Mixu is coming from. He's going right for the throat, going for those for that aloe line again. Absolver heavily damaged though already. Heavily damaged and out of range of the resonance, so Mixu's damage will be limited. Still getting rid of another aloe line is worth something. It's just if they keep doing this, they are going to run into problems. Oh, here we go. We have the Absolver able to get a decent chunk of damage, start ripping apart some of Mr. Cream's army. Mr. Cream did at least preserve some amount of their units. They can start upgrading them later, thanks to the deaths. It's just... Mixu bought themselves a little bit of time to get their army back up online. 
Yeah, and Mix is not done attacking. He doesn't care about his defense. Behind this, he's expanding, as you said. He's going for his free bases. And Mix is going well, back th in. This is their defense. He's, like, the, Mixu is yep. attacking to keep their bases safe. It's a risky defense, that, but funny. if it works out, they are going to be way ahead. And here comes the Warden. Warden able to attack into those ground units. Rest is not shoot up. But Mala has well, a Mass Hunters. Hunters, Mass Hunters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mass Hunters can take care of this, no problem. Well, Mixer has great micro here, really keeping it alive and attacking the weaker ones, using like, the ledge to keep them out of position, and it never stops. Watching that, it's like, Mixu, okay, just br pulling, a, pulling out all of their last hit skills to bear here. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it yeah, it pays really off. That. It really yeah, was. It really is that with Warden. It really is that with Warden. Every fifth shot does extra damage, so making sure to hit the exact right unit at the right time. Uh, try not to lose it, keeping it out of range, oh, and they it are survives fine. again. They are, they are way off in the corner, nothing can get to them. Wait, no, 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 I, makes it, what did I just say? I just said nothing can get to them, don't, don't let it, don't let me be wrong. Make it stop here, it'll have free reign, don't move around, it's done. It cannot attack into anything, it will die. Same time, Mixu's is still building up these absolvers, so they got an army on the ready. Yeah, he's just going to go in to kill the base. As soon as Tigger comes around the base, he'll realize it and say, oh, okay, time to bring the absolvers because you're too far to defend this and... Uh, and you're not building up enough at home. Like, yeah. it, Mr. Cream, I'm sure Mixu's well uh, kind of realized, Mr. Cream's just not building enough, quickly enough, or have the economy to really support it. So, yeah, the moment the moment that they see this coming, actually, as it stands now, getting rid of him, sheesh! Get rid of the resident yeah, so too. That was, that was the entire strategy for for Kareem. Yeah, well, Mixer's strategy seems to be just base trade, and then you get the wardens kill everything with superior micro. Uh, you might lose a warden though, so that might die a bit. The absolvers coming in from the back to go to the natural. Hmm. That's one angle of attack, and that's kind of been expected from Golden Tigger. He sees that come in, uh, and absolvers sieging up. And that's gonna be that's gonna be painful. I mean, at the very least, again. It's a little bit of consolation prize for Mr. Kareem. Though they haven't actually used Pyra to upgrade any of their units. So, so far, this has been, I guess, slight buying of time. Not a whole lot actually being developed from that. And now the natural expansion is in jeopardy. Golden Tigger able to retreat in time to potentially stomp it. Setting up. Getting something. Oh, he's setting up in range, though. One of those Absorbers can get it, but the Absorber does damage. Nah, more importantly, more importantly the flank coming in from Mixu through the bridge, able to wipe out all of Mr. Kareem's army, and the bases go down soon afterwards. Mr. Kareem has got nothing to stop this. Like, nothing can stop Mixu now, and Mr. Kareem knows it. Mixu takes game one. And the proxy Soul Foundry inside the base, that's uh, unusual. I like it. <laughs> I, I wonder if... I... I've... It is on. It is very much unusual. I think I've seen it once before. Like I'm not surprised they we wouldn't see it coming. Like no one ever really does that. But when it happens, when it happens, it's worth a lot. Yeah, especially since well, they were able to rebuild five of them afterwards in the second push. Well, in that final push with the Sapari coming in from the back. Ooh, man, that's a lot of pizza spinners, as Santa likes to say. Oh boy, was it ever? That was solid demonstration of what just numbers can do. Okay, really, is that was what it was. It was makes you having the chance to build up all these resolvers without having to worry about being counterattacked in the meantime, and then just push in. Yeah, while Golden Tigger was counterattacking, exactly, pushing, forcing him back, and then everything coming in perfectly. And Mr. Krim will have his work cut out for him for the next game, but of course, uh, this probably won't happen again. Mixu will have to go for something a bit less... Uh, Weird. Well, that's assuming... I don't know, because I don't think Mr. Krim went into Godmund at the end of the game. I don't think they saw what was going on. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. Maybe he could have anticipated, but hard to say. I don't know. Uh, that could that could possibly work a second time. No. Nope. In any event, it's a question of which map we see, we go to. It is up to Mr. Kareem. Yep. Uh, of course, in this tournament, we only have Lost, uh, Lost Province and Fool's Bay. Uh, too much we've seen a decent amount. Of course, we've seen more of Lost Province. I do enjoy Fool's Bay quite a bit. That's an understatement, but yes, we do have... Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a good map. I mean, it's popular for a reason. It's not like it's... Oh, it's a great it's, map. It's got good gameplay. It's just oh, yeah. that it's the only Overused. map that really works well for both 1v1 and 2v2. The other maps work fine for 2v2, but 1v1 has been 
only recently getting developed into, and the map for that is currently in kind of a proof of concept stage. It's not set up. It's not. It's you can look at it, but you can't play on it. I'm I'm quite curious what it's going to look like at the end. It is uh, well, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be called Canyon. I'm not sure if it is, that's only its working title, its final title. It's being developed by Superman, uh, a great mapper from StarCraft II, who built some of the most popular maps there. Uh, currently working with Sunspear Games, so really looking forward to see what he comes up with, especially with such an open design here, open map design where the devs want to try everything. They want to figure out what works, what doesn't. Yeah, they don't want to be trying out. They they don't want to be stuck into a single design, which I very much appreciate. Yeah, no, especially that point of open design, right? You want a map design too. Yeah. You don't need to have a small choke point at every natural. You don't need the natural to always be on a low ground from the main. Uh, you don't want, it can be as open as you want. The third base can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be right next door. It can be uh, hidden away somewhere. Just an open map design with uh, multiple paths attack, rocks blocking stuff if you want. Yeah, it's, it's basically avoiding the hyperfitting problem or the yeah, overfitting exactly. problem. Is That's exactly what it is. And it's, I mean, you know, we'll see what happens once we start getting into more and more maps. But as it stands, oh. Gosh. Actually, that might, might be fun for one. I don't know. It doesn't, whatever. It's, unfortunately, we have had some small issues. So if Fool's Bane and Lost Promise are the only maps that are available for this tournament. Yep. And we have, we have had Fool's Bay in the 1v1 map pool for a while. Right. Uh, but people have not been playing it quite as much just because uh, it, it's kind of a peculiar map for 1v1 as there's three it's ways to take the main. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the so main. hard to keep yourself safe on yeah. that map. So we will be heading back to Lost Province. Lost Province is a very popular one. As we're talking about, the great map that uh, that well, were tested out. That were tested I out mean, quite a bit in the Vanguard initially. So It was, yeah. Actually, that's the truth. That's the new map isn't Vanguard. Vanguard being the mod for Starcraft 2 that was the prototype for Immortal. That's a small bit of history, but yeah, that all the maps that we've seen so far on stream, like in any stream, have been maps based off of maps that were developed for Vanguard originally, and the new Canyon map is not one of those. It is yeah. completely brand new. Yeah, I was checking out the 1v1 maps of Vanguard. I was like, oh, does it compare? No, it's completely different. Ooh, you're yeah. ready to test stuff out. <laughs> Interesting. Exciting. <laughs> About but for now, the players are going to be a little bit more vanilla as we are getting back into game two. Mixu having convincingly won the last game, but Lost Province again means there might be an opportunity for Kareem to come back with possibly seeing what happens. If, if they clued in or just went into full map vision, then they'll know. Mm, they are heading back to using uh, Ajari, so Mala might not be his favorite immortal as well. He might be or he's just someone that likes to try every single immortal. We've had different type of players, some that play everything. And Mix, of course, is someone that oh. tries everything, including Mala. A reversal. Okay, then. Well, let's see what... If Mr. Cream tries to go for the same... Th I mean, really funny if Mr. Cream tried to go for the same thing. Oh, yeah, I don't expect they so will. Like, I, I expect it's going to be very scary. They're one game behind, and they're funny uphill battle as it is, just in terms of skill. So, like, they're definitely the underdog... I don't see them necessarily going for that. But you know what? They might. They might just decide, you know, I don't want to play the long game. I want to see if I can just break you immediately. I mean, it is something that we've heard in the background that uh, the proxy soul foundry is very powerful in this matchup, especially against uh, against Mala. Mala has Ooh. some difficulty defending okay. it. Okay, okay. We're s the very least, Kareem is going for something aggressive. Like, mm. they're going to have to get some damage early on if they're going for an early Legion Hall like that. They, they... Like, this is not the slow macro game that we saw the first game develop into for Mr. Kareem. Oh no, he's going to for something. He might just go for the kill directly as Mixu going completely standard. But he scouts everything. He has his teapot scout coming into the base to scout the expansion, not coming down. We'll see the Legion Hall as it goes into the base. Yep. I will and be completely double... known. Everything's transparent. Yep. The double Efers as well. So Good uh, sign of early Soul Foundry. No forward moat. So it's not a proxy. Unfortunate. I love the proxies, but not this time. Well, actually, hang on. No, no, I'm wrong because the timing is now. Hmm. This is when he'd set the moat for the proxy. So this is exactly what Kareem is doing. Keep an eye on this moat. Could be going to the middle of the map. Could be going right into Mixu's base. And Mixu, they are wise to the possibility. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, did they did they set a moat early just to have it there? Oh, but okay. Mr. Kareem has been playing this for a while. 
setting yep, up this the Soul Foundry in the center. Yeah, this, yeah, this look, is the strategy look, we saw a lot last week, actually, in the 2v2 matches. Yeah, and look at these timings as well, getting it right just a bit before it's time to get the Soul Foundry down. I really like how he's been timing everything out to, you know, just be used to what to, to the timings as well of his Efer extractor and everything coming down bright. I actually love seeing that for yeah. players. It's like, oh yeah, I timed this out. I know when to send my mold out exactly. Of course, Mixu time. knows. The thing's Mixu going sending the scout straight into it does spot it. Because of course, like they know. Okay, well they, this is early, early ether, early Legion Hall, no expansion. There's gonna be a Soul Foundry somewhere. The question is just where. Yep, and Not how to if, defend it's it. It's where. Yeah, exactly. Where it is now, at the very least, Mixu can do kind of standard defense. As long as they can hold their main, their, their natural ramp, they're going to be fine. Or natural bridge, they're going to be fine. Yeah, holding natural bridge is actually a pretty tall order against Absolvers. And Good at this point, point Tigger with the faster Zipari will be able to get both of the early pirate camps. Oh, he needs to attack it down, though, before Mixu comes in. But Mixu might not care. Mixu heading to the Soul Foundry. He doesn't want to let it go up. But Golden Tigger has enough of those Zipari to defend it. It's just... It is clearly a multitasking thing. Like, that's something I'm noticing with Mr. Kareem, is they've been doing a lot of good work with clearly having practiced in solo mode to nail down timings and nail down build orders and get an idea of how to get what they want as efficiently as possible. But you can't practice multitasking oh, in solo the mode. Walk, the building block, oh, the building wall to just block around the units. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. Of course, the Blood Wheel won't go down, and it's pretty hard to play Ring Around Rosie for so long as those as those Separi are just a bit faster. Slow them down, though. Goes down. That was, that was oh, yeah. enough. That was enough, at least to buy to take out maybe one or two Sapari, but now the healing is back in. The Absolvers are up. One Sapari is down, but so are so many of the Masked Hunters. Mixu losing a significant chunk of their army in the meantime. Well, Mixu's play right now is just to slow down his opponent to get the units up as fast as possible, but was that slowing it down enough? The base in the middle is quite original from, from Tigger. We don't see that quite often. Uh, but why not? You had the Soul Foundry there. You may as well yeah, have... You, you yeah, have protection. Well. It does... It feels really risky, though. I can't say that this is... This is a atypical for no reason. It's... Like, it's a forward base. Mixu can come in here, pop in from just the right angle, and start r ripping it apart. If Mr. Kareem isn't paying close attention to this Acropolis, it's gonna go down real fast. Well, you already lost... Well, if you lose this old foundry, you're already pretty much dead, so may as well put all your eggs in one basket and really go for it in this next push. Uh, as as, as is famously, up. the famous quote goes, always put your eggs in one basket. Well, obviously. Why would you put them in separate baskets? It's That's so much true. It's really hard to carry. <laughs> hey, Jinx. Omnivore. Omnivore coming up. <laughs> oh, is it an Omnivore? Yeah, there's an Omnivore. It's, omni terrible. it's coming oh. up, but it's going to take a little while. Yeah, it might be a bit too slow. That could have made a big difference. Heaven's Age just comes down, giving all those units extra shields on those attack. And Mixu doing his best to micro back and kill those units, staying out of range of those Absolvers. But the Pizza Delivery guys are here. The Pizzas are shooting lasers everywhere. And the Omnivore won't be al alive for long. The Omnivore won't be alive for long, but the rest of Mixu's forces are giving time getting time to set up. So only two Absolvers is simply not a s that much. Like, it's taken out the... Got grow part, I'm gonna be wrong, but it's taking it out so slowly that Mixu has had time to rebuild, set up, regroup, and nail these absolvers to the wall. Or at least we'll try. try. Yeah, exactly. Right, at least bought enough, bought enough time for the heavier units. If nothing else, bought enough time to get the actual dislodgers, to get rid of everything here. Yeah, and maybe save some the heavy damage? Maybe? It's so close to. There's all, oh, there's all no, the rest is gonna die! Oh, the Dawn of Resident deployed! They can't use it! They cannot outrange the Absolver yet! Going for the regroup. This is so close, but the reinforcements coming in from Golden from Mr. Kareem. Just barely enough. Absolvers deployed, go down. The rest are out of range. There's this grow part is alive for that at least the next five seconds, but Mr. Kareem smells blood in the water. They want this gone. Can they take it? Mixu saves the day. Barely. Ooh, talk about his clutch defense there from Mixu getting his right units just at the right time. And the counterattack is going on. The Absolvers can see up at the top of the hill, so Mixu knows that goes around to make sure. But that's still three Absolvers, and we saw how much power there all are in those four Absolvers. Can Mixu have a better defense than his opponent did in the last game? We'll see, as he does have Resonance online. One Zakal, a few other units that can really help in that defense. And they can set up a Blood Well for that extra range. Oh, Which okay. they are doing exactly. Like... Mixu's got this set up. That Acropolis is under heavy threat. And seems that all Mr. Cream can do is try to...
prepare as best as possible with a jar with pyro abilities. Yeah, he does have all that power saved up, so he he has a few abilities he can use up. He can do another Heaven's Aegis to jump on top of this. The that's about it, honestly. That, that's about all they can really do. They don't have enough for anything else. But hey, that's more than enough. I mean, still keeps the units in good health. And it, Resonance are not deployed yet. The Blood Well is up, but it's not going to last for long. Mixu, once again, trying to fight uphill into Absolvers. Losing a ton of units in the meantime, and now this Acropolis is saved. So, given the like, given the results here, Mixu barely saving an expansion in their natural expansion, given them very little map control, compared to Mr. Kareem saving a base at almost full health with middle of the map presence. Like, Mr. Kareem can take the eastern side of the map at their leisure now, while Mixu is barely, slowly, and at great risk, inching out of their base. Yeah, Mr. Kareem is in an amazing position. Yeah, Mixu going for his third base now, and I'm not sure it's quite the move, but if he does survive this, you know, once you're behind, sometimes you just have to take a risk, and that's what Mixu is going for, taking that third base to keep him alive a bit faster, but Colton Tigger does, has his... Uh, Finger on the trigger, he's not letting go. He's ready to keep pushing. Legion Hall at the forefront for faster reinforcements. And the next push will be pretty deadly. Uh, next push is going to determine how it goes from here. It's... I don't want to say it's going to be the last. It won't be the last. It will, however, be decisive. Well, that's a lot of resonance, though. It, it is a lot you... of resonance. It's, like, it is going to come down to who can catch who out of position and nail the zone control units. If they can take if and this is going well for Mr. Kareem. This is perfect for Mr. Kareem. Half the residents are on the other side of the map. They have nothing to really hunt down. One goes down for basically free and the third is vulnerable. Mixu maybe forced to cancel this buying Mr. Kareem that much more time. I mean, imagine trying to get their own economy up at the moment. It's just the two bases. Actually, getting that base down is not too bad for Mixu. He's still on two base versus two base, and it forces his opponent to attack that instead of going to his natural. It gives him a bit more time to defend, and might even get a second Absolver out of this. Citadel getting the first one earlier, and only two Mixu. Absolvers gets two Resonance. Mixu has actually pulled ahead significantly. They got the Resonance in a position for the ally line on top of all of that, and Mr. Kareem, despite having plenty of time to build up, they have not set up an economy. They've been using the middle of the map as their main base. But not having that extra economy, not even going for the other Acropolis in the main little, out in the main valley area, let alone going for anything off to the side. This is an opening Mixu is going to take advantage of. Oh, this not high ground for Kareem. Mixu still just shut down the expansion, so nothing can really be built up. Nothing can really go if if Mixu sets up. Mixu sets up here. Going, I mean, go for the high ground. Mr. Kareem has some options to dislodge, but it's not where they're going to go for. Going straight for the main army, and Mixu, Mixu's going to be more than happy about this. They can take everything out if, if, if Mr. Kareem wants to fight the main fight. Yeah, Mr. Kareem. Oh man, Mr. Kareem has a great army, but Mixu does have a a very powerful one as well. Losing his third is pretty expensive. As Mr. Kareem does not have a third of his own, and his second natural is not even mining. The Legion Tall's in the middle, getting lost one after the other. That's looking a bit more dire for, for him, but at this point, Mixu heading for a counterattack instead? Well, heading for a split. Half his army. Yeah, yeah. going for... Like, they, they realize, of course, that Mr. Cream hasn't really built up in their main base at all, so it's not a whole lot of investment to take that out. The main the stronghold is in the center of the map, so just keep, just keep stuff there to hold the line, and every, otherwise... Wipe out every part of their functional economy. Because without this, without this, Mr. Cream is nothing. Mr. Cream is completely yeah. shut down and knows it. Going for the base race themselves. Potentially sacrificing their crops cool. in the center. But they they take out what's left of this natural expansion. Take out the main base. Mixu is going hard for the main th themselves. It's just they don't have anything set up. They do have the money to build an emergency gro grove heart if they... Do that. They're gonna be fine. It's just they aren't doing that. They're they're getting hit hard. Production's going down. Main defense is going down. Same he time as the problem in the map. center is going down. The base race is in favor of Mr. Kareem having built the six o'clock. Mixu does have their third being set up. Much closer, much easier to spot. It's gonna Mr. Kareem having a slight advantage in this base race. Mixu 
We'll at least we'll take this everything one. then. Yeah, it does come down to the army if I this point. Mixi will be able to fight this head on as he can micro back a bit better than his opponent. Uh, but he does need to head back home if he wants to defend against this big push. Well, more importantly, Bigger. it's going to be... it's If Mr. Kareem... Oh, they're going to spot this on the way out. Like, they're going to oh, spot this base on the way out, and they're going to take it out. Whereas Mixi has they a base have the bottom left. Oh, they do. Oh, you're right. Okay. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. Yeah. This this is going to be a turning point here. Mr. Cream having the presence of mind to double check. Good on them. They Do they see this? Please tell me they see this. No, they don't. Uh, they don't even check. What? Uh, they didn't think the third base. Oh, why would you take a third base there, right? You want to attack somewhere else. You want to hide in a corner. And he finds the one in the corner immediately, but misses yeah, the finds, one. <laughs> finds the hidden base, misses the obvious base. Yeah, I missed I the mean, one it, right in front of his eyes. <laughs> Oof. This, that, Mixu, Mixu has this, this is their game to lose. Yeah, Mixu also has the bigger arm. Oh, it's going to be a tough fight, right? If they decide to fight straight up. Yeah. Mixu did separate his army. Mixu separated his army in two, so if if Mr. Cream can find both at different times, he might have a chance. Uh, but does he have a moat somewhere on the map that can rebuild another base if this one dies? But it doesn't matter. He's going for they the defense. Three residents are alone. The free residents are trying to survive as much as they can. Mallet user ability. But this oh, time, Mixu's reinforcements coming in. Is it enough? They're attacking from everywhere. The residents at the back attacking absolvers directly. Evans Age is giving a huge amount of shields. Sapari jumping on top of it, but missed but Mixu has too much. He kills the army. At this point, it seems like Mr. Krim lost the final fight and might just have to lose the game based on that. Uh, that use of red harvest by Mixu there at the last second. Just enough, like, because of course, it gets the extra kittle, gets the extra buys. That bought them enough time for the regroup, giving them the giving the army win and giving them the series. But I gotta say, I gotta say, Mr. Kareem, that was amazing. Like, I, I really, you have not had a chance to play a lot. You, you just went against one of the best players in this entire community, and you very yep. nearly took a game off of them. Like, be proud of that. Your practice has paid off. And also, you showed us a strategy that we haven't really seen before. The the use of the of that center expansion was really clever. Because like you said, ZK, that's a huge point for you anyway. You might as well invest in it. Yep. Nah, that was his defense. And I kind of liked it because that meant he had complete power control in the middle. Yes. Because if someone attacks, there, all your units are already there. That's where your yes. reinforcements are coming in. The biggest issue is the counterattacks, which Mixu did end up winning the game with, right? He ended up going directly to the main. Uh, but was it really the main at that point, as all his buildings and stuff were in the middle of the map anyways? It wasn't, still but it was still, at that point, because there was no other economy, because the economy yeah. had been locked down from the Pyre camp, or from the Pyre Mountain camp, it was, like, uh, that was the problem. And yeah. honestly, I, honestly, I do think that if there was, if Mr. Cream had gone for an expansion after getting some attacks and starting to set up, like, just get one expansion, like the 3 o'clock... Or even the natural. Because yeah. they kind of have the east side of the map to themselves. They yep. could have just taken that, had the extra economy, and then used that to set up to fully defend the middle of the map. And that would have been enough to hold their line. Yep. And then from there, they could just take everything. Well, we will be heading to the next map, which will be Mixu against Santa. Whew. At the bottom of the bracket, we have a Scruffy that took out Sparkling. And heading out against a Scruffy in that lower bracket round two. Uh... Both of these maps were pretty interesting, right? Scruffy versus uh, versus Mr. Cream, who's shown of his uh, his medal today. Who's shown that he's yep, showing their practice, showing their yep. their lab time. I do like that he also played both two immortals. We often have our newer players only playing one. Mr. Cream does not care. He uses everything he has at his disposal. Neither of them were Orzum too. Oh yeah, Ajari and like Mal. for those of you for those of you who have not played because you know there have been raffles and such, which people have been. Well, okay, the only person to sign up was Hydra, who obviously has a key. Did they sign up again? Do I have to give them two keys now? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh. You have to give them two keys. <laughs> Thing is, like Hydra, I'm pretty sure they better sure give them to someone who who needs them. Like, oh, Hydra did hmm. mention that he wanted to keep them to have extra accounts when the game launches because you know it's hard to make a free account for a game that's going to be free to play, and uh, he wants to make sure he has enough keys for that. <laughs> you could have told me that before I gave him the second key. Ooh, no, he's probably going to give out to to another friend. I hope so. To be fair, like Hydra has, yeah, Hydra has a lot of friends. Yeah, Hydra has a lot of friends. But yeah, a lot of so high level players new as well. new players, especially those who aren't particularly experienced in strategy games, Orzum is a good choice because you it's very much slow push. You can hold the line. You don't have to worry as much about 
multi like Ajari's a lot more micro, multitask focus. You gotta really focus on keeping units alive because you don't have as beefy units. With Aru, that's even more the case with both Zol and Mala. That's bo both the case. And Zol's even pushes that even to 11 because of how much you have to keep bouncing back and forth to take advantage of make your units go hidden. So, Orzum is a solid opening choice. It's a solid new player choice. But Zol is fine because you get to control Zol. Oh, Zol is amazing. I love Zol. Zol's my main. But, yeah, but for, you get to for a newer Zol. player, I really do recommend Orzum just... And if you really want to play Aru, Mala is still a little easier to learn because, again, it's very much that slow push map control stuff. Yeah, but you don't, you don't micro get a, as much. You don't get a huge Zol on the map, though. You, you don't get a huge Zol on the map. That is a point that is a in big favor issue. of Zol. That's a big issue of Mala. You don't get Zol coming in to fight your battles. Which, you know, would probably cause some uh, yep. a bit of infighting between them, but yeah. Gotta keep I, the families happy. I've. Well, I don't know. They were talking about it. It's like. That Aru. The Aru most don't get along. Oh, no, definitely like, not. That Mala, Mala and Zol, like, the, them fighting is completely in character. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. Zol won't go to fight for Mala. If, uh, oh, if Mala yeah, can summon Zol. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, Tony Zol can summon herself to the battlefield and help out the troops a little before heading back home. This costs her a bit of pyre, though. You do need to spend that pyre. She needs I'm kind of curious if there's, like, what the lore reason is for that. Like, is it just that with pyre you can teleport somewhere, or is it that she's, like, popping out from the deep way or root way or whatever, and there's, like, popping oh, up out of the ground? It's it kind of feels like five that. Battles at once. It was always finding five battles at once, and she needs the pyre to come to that battle before going back to the real one. Right. I don't really know. Because imagine if she's I, I'm fighting really another curious. planet. If she's fighting another planet, then she has to come to this planet to fight. Oof. It's going to be really hard to do.